Hi everybody, in this lesson we want to talk about square roots. Now you remember that 16, the number 16, actually has two square roots. Uh, both 4 and negative 4 are square roots because if you square either 4 or negative 4, you'll get 16. But when we write the square root of 16, this, uh, this refers unambiguously to the positive root only. That's so that if, uh, if I had a function, f of x equals the square root of x, then for when I plug in 16, I'm only going to get out the one value. So the square root of 16 is just 4. The square root of 16 will never equal negative 4 when I write it like this, okay? So the square root of 36 is just 6. If I did want the negative root, then I just put a minus sign out front so that I'd, I'd have the square root of 36, which is 6, and then I would indicate the negative root by putting a minus out front. Now the square root of negative 36, I'd have to have a number that I could square to get a negative 36, which, which isn't uh, possible. There is no real number, and so, so this is not a real number. There's no real number that you could square to get a, any negative number, okay? All right. Now, I also want to talk about uh, rational and irrational numbers here. A number is rational, you remember, if it can be written as a ratio. So again, in algebra or mathematics, whenever you hear rational, you should think ratio. And ratios has to do with fractions, and and uh, so a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction. And the decimal representation of any fraction uh, either terminates or it repeats. In fact, any decimal number uh, that terminates or repeats can be shown to be equal to a fraction, okay? So a number is going to be irrational if its decimal representation neither terminates nor repeats, okay? So for example, um, 0.25, that is a terminating decimal, 0.25, and it stops, uh, so that's rational. Okay, and it can be written as a fraction. And this is the ultimate test if something is rational, if it can be written as a fraction. In this case, one quarter. Okay, 0.333 repeating, that's also rational because it can be written as a fraction. You can write that as a third. Okay. On the other hand, pi is irrational, okay? It cannot be written as a fraction, and you remember that uh, pi is 3.14159, and it never stops, it never terminates, and it never repeats. So, so pi is irrational because its decimal representation never terminates nor repeats. And that's what we mean by an irrational number. Okay? So the last thing we want to talk about is, since we're talking about rational numbers and square roots, is it turns out that the square root of any number is going to be irrational. Uh, and so when you plug it into your calculator to find the square root of any number, it's going to give you a bunch of decimals that neither terminate nor re repeat, uh, unless, unless A is a perfect square. Okay, so for example, the square root of 2, the square root of 3, but I'll skip the square root of 4 because 4 is a perfect square and the square root of 5, and the square root of 6, and the square root of 7, the square root of 8, but I'll have to skip the square root of 9 because 9 is a perfect square, square root of 10, and so on. These are all going to be irrational. So when you put those in your calculator to find this, the, that decimal equivalent, you're going to get a long list of decimals that's going to not terminate and they, they won't repeat. But the square root of 4 and the square root of 9, they are rational, okay? And that's because 
uh, four and nine are perfect squares. But all these other numbers are not.